Hi, so we are just going to be jumping into our wonders curriculum. So thankfully, we all took home our orange writing workshop book. So that was our wonders reader. Um, it's that orange textbook that you took home. We'll be using that today, okay? So yesterday, we started to build our background knowledge. So when we do that, we are activating ideas that we already had in our mind, maybe some learning that we already did this year, and that builds our schema. Schema is a setup in your mind where you have previous ideas of a concept. And when you learn new information, that new information has somewhere to go and connect to that older information. And it makes your learning and understanding much stronger. So it's real important that we do that. So for building our background knowledge, we looked at three different pictures of three different animals in Empower yesterday. And I had you discuss and type out what special features these animals had. And when we talk about special features in animals, we also can say that those are adaptations. And adaptations help those animals survive. So it might be their fur, the coloring, uh, the type of legs they have, their speed, or if they're slow, if they can camouflage, if they have certain teeth, their eyes that help them survive. So unique features can also be adaptations. And we learned about that already this year. So we activated that knowledge that we know and we're gonna build off of that in this unit for wonders. Um, so when we talk about things being unique, we can also say in Spanish, único. So that is something that is one of a kind. You have that that nobody else does. So humans can also be unique as well as animals, right? So um, today we are going to be using our orange reading book. And I would like you to turn to page 178 and 179. So if you need time, you can pause the video, go find that. That should be in your tote bag that we sent home that day with your Chromebook. And we're gonna to turn to page 178 and 179. And that is connecting how humans are unique and animals are unique. So basically this page should look like this for you. It's got the two dolphins and it says special quality. So I'm just gonna read that to you. On page 178, it says essential question. What makes different animals unique? Okay, so that's what we're really gonna be focusing on in this unit. Special qualities on page 179. Bottlenose dolphins are unique mammals. They have the right shape for gliding through the water and they talk to each other by whistling. So that's really interesting. They're unique. So they're mammals. So they're similar to like tigers and dogs that they're mammals, but they look totally different. And they have unique features that are different from a tiger or a dog, okay? All animals have qualities that are unique. Animals use their special features to get what they need, protect themselves, and communicate. And then at the bottom it says talk about it. So I know we're not in class and we can't talk to our table partners, but it's really important that you go tell somebody about what you're learning today because that activates your schema, that activates your prior knowledge and it connects the new knowledge and you have better understanding when you use um, language to express yourself about your thinking. So talk about it, talk with a partner or somebody at home about other animals and their unique qualities. You also can write about it, write it out in a bubble map if you would like, or a circle map. Um, and that really helps you process your thinking. So that's really important that you still do that, okay? So that's the first part of today's lesson. There's a part here that you don't have in your book that I'm just going to read to you, okay? So now we're going to do a read aloud and I would do that in class where you would just close your eyes, sit back, listen, and you're going to work on a skill called visualizing. So when you visualize, it really helps with reading comprehension. So I want you to picture in your mind everything I'm reading. I want you to picture the characters and picture what's happening. And if they talk about something specific, picture that in your mind. And that goes nice and deep in your brain so that you can remember and do a retell about the story, okay? So 
Reading comprehension is when we understand the story, okay? And there's some different strategies you can use to help you with reading comprehension. And one of them is to understand the genre of the story you're reading. So today's genre is a folk tale. And a folk tale is a story that is usually told orally, so just spoken, and it's passed down from generation to generation. So that would mean a grandparent would tell a parent, and then a parent would tell a kid, and then the kids, when they grow up, they would tell their kids. So that's generation to generation, these stories are passed down. So that's one element of a folk tale. Another element of a folk tale, the second one, is that it teaches a moral or a lesson. It has a theme. And usually those themes, the morals and the lessons, help the reader be a better person, be more kind, be more helpful. So that's a feature in a folk tale. Um, usually in a folk tale, they have animals that are speaking as the main characters. So they get to speak animals. And um, yeah, so I covered all of that. So those are the features of a folk tale. Some other types of genres are fairy tale or nonfiction, but today we are dealing with folk tale, which is fiction and um, it's passed down from generation to generation. So as I read this story, I want you to close your eyes and visualize in your mind the who, the what, the where, and the how of the story. So you picture in your mind what is happening in the story. You can identify and discuss elements of a folktale story. And at the end, you're able to summarize what happened in the story. The main idea, the details that are in order and in sequence. And you can tell me about the characters. Okay, so that's the focus as I'm reading. As I'm reading, I want you to listen for my fluency. Um, I want to be a good model for having good fluency in your reading. And do you remember what fluency is? It's when we are trying to read like we speak. So we don't speak real choppy and break up every word that we say, right? We want to speak very fluently so people can understand us all the way through our full thought. And when I'm reading, I'm going to be using the punctuation. So when I see a comma, I'm going to take a breath. When I see a period, I'm going to take a breath. And I'm going to try to read all the way until the next punctuation mark. Because that will give a complete thought. And then I can take a breath. And I won't be breaking up my fluency. Okay? When I'm done reading, I want you to be able to respond to this story in Empower. So you're going to click back on. And there's a Google Doc associated with this video and you're going to just fill in all the information on that retail about what you learned and listened for in this story okay so the title of the story is called bear beaver and bee so just sit back and listen once there was a big strong bear who was afraid of his own shadow he longed to leave the dark mountains of Sierra San Luis Sonora that frightened him so. He hoped to live out his years in a sunny adobe home in the desert. One day, he set out walking to find this place of which he dreamed. Soon, he came to a beaver chewing a log. That's quite a skill, said Bear. It is, said Beaver. But you can't imagine how bored I am building dams across the river all day. I long to build something else, a house perhaps. So I want you to pause and think, am I visualizing the story? Am I visualizing beaver? Am I visualizing bear? Am I visualizing the house that he wants to build and what beaver's doing? So be sure you're listening and visualizing in your mind. A house, cried Bear. It is my dream to live in a snug house in the desert. Come with me and we can build one together. I am very strong. Beaver dropped the log he was chewing and left with Bear. Soon they stopped to rest. They watched a bee fly in and out of a hollow tree with nectar from a nearby mesquite tree. 
The poor bee looked so tired. Sit here and rest with us, said Bear to Bee. No time, cried Bee, zipping past them. I'm making honey. The queen won't let me stop. We have 80,000 bees to feed. So now we have a new character. I want you to visualize. Are you visualizing Bee zipping in and out of that tree? Very busy making honey. I love honey, said Bear. Me too, said Beaver. Well, if I only had two to feed, my life would be easier, said Bee. You can't imagine the work it takes to feed thousands every day. Come with us, said Bear. We're going to build a home in the desert. You can make mesquite honey for us. We'll have a grand life. And that's just what they did. Beaver cut logs and Strong Bear hauled them to the desert. Together they stacked them and covered them with adobe. Bee gathered mesquite nectar and made honey. Each evening the three friends sat in the cool shade of their home. They talked about how lucky they were to have found each other. Now, hopefully you visualized all that happened in that story. The logs that they cut down and hauled, the bee that was making the honey. So now what I want you to do is take that story. I want you to go back and click over to the Google document and I want you to respond to this. So I want you to be thinking about the retail you're going to be doing for the story. Answer the questions about what kind of genre the story was the characters in the story, and what happened. What happened in the plot? What was the action of the story? What happened first? What happened next? And what ha happened last? What was the main idea? What were the details in sequence from beginning to end? And then what was the moral or the lesson that you learned? So go ahead and click over and fill out that Google Doc. Good job.